All right, today's topic is tools and equipment, and in this uh, brief tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about two categories of equipment, and that is uh, processing tools and then your heavy equipment. So to get started right away, um, your processing equipment is any device, both electrical and non-electrical, that is going to save you time in the kitchen, making you a more efficient chef. Um, your processing equipment is used to chop, puree, slice, grind, mix foods, pretty much anything that you would typically have done by hand. There's equipment that does the same thing, um, making you go quicker through a recipe and also making your finished product look more professional and consistent. Um, so it, it, it's something that is a, a, a plus thing if you have the available resources. Now with using your processing equipment, it's important that you're considering safety first always. So just so quickly, um, if you were going to go and buy like a butter or a food processor, it's important that you're always reviewing like the manual. In class, uh, your teacher will go through um, how to use each piece of equipment. So they're pretty much going to be telling you uh, what the uh, manual would say about the equipment. So you'll, you'll know exactly how to use it. Um, if you're going to be cleaning the equipment, which you should be cleaning the equipment, it's important that because if, if it is electrical, you are removing the devices, uh, you know, you're unplugging it, um, you're taking it apart, you're not dunking the engine in water, uh, we don't want anyone to get hurt. And if anything ever malfunctions or goes wrong, just let your teacher know and they can probably fix it for you or put it away and tell you not to use it. They'll fix the problem quicker than you messing around with it. So it's important to just always communicate anything that goes wrong with the equipment to your teacher. And a big thing, um, and I know it's self-explanatory, but never place your hand into a moving kitchen mixer, whether it's the small kitchen mixer or the large kitchen mixer, because things can whip back at your face. Um, if you put your hand in the moving mixer, especially the large one, it's so powerful, you would be seriously injured. So it's important that you're not messing around, no horseplay, things like that, while, um, while using that processing equipment, or just in lab in general. So um, moving on, some processing equipment that's in the kitchen um, is an electronic slicer, typically used for like slicing lunch meats, cheeses, things like that. Um, we do not have one, but you will get to, you're going to be doing activity right after this tutorial. You'll be uh, looking at pictures, operation procedures for each of these pieces. Um, the next one is a mandolin, uh, another type of a slicer, a food chopper, which grinds up meat, food processor, which we will be using a lot in this course, um, which does pretty much everything, a blender, which we'll be using for Javachino, immersion blender, which is also called a stick blender, uh, a kitchen mixer, which we'll be using for like every single lab, and then a juicer um, to extract uh, juice from citrus fruits. Okay, so the next category of equipment is your heavy equipment. Um, this includes both gas, electric, and steam-operated appliances, and these appliances are used primarily just for cooking, reheating, or hot food, food holding. Um, they also include dishwashers and refrigeration units, so it kind of doesn't fall into the primary uses, but dishwashers and refrigeration units um, are considered heavy equipment. So, um, some things to consider with uh, heavy equipment, they are installed in a fixed location, meaning um, where all of our, majority of our heavy equipment, the oven, the range, the griddle, and the deep fryer, that's on a gas line. Um, the oven is also electric, so it has to plug in, but it's in a fixed location. You can't move it. Um, it, it helps with the kitchen's traffic flows, uh, etc. It's built into the blueprint, so, so it's, it's there for life, or at least until the room is still there. Um, some things also to know is they may be per these pieces of heavy equipment can be purchased, um, new or used, and then they can also be leased. And what that means is if you purchase something, it's yours until it dies or you know stops working. If you lease it, you are leasing that equipment um, for only a specific time period, and then at the end of the lease, you have the option to either purchase or um, to purchase that equipment or to give it. You would have to give it back. So it, there's pluses and minuses to both purchasing and leasing equipment. It all depends on 
um, your individual situation if you were going to be buying this for your establishment. Um, some heavy equipment in the kitchen are your stove tops, also known as your range, your oven, um, regular and confection, wood burning oven, microwave ovens, um, and those are the ones that like usually are on top of, like they're in a fixed location on top of the range, not just the typical uh, microwave that we have in class. Then we also have your dishwasher, broiler and grill, your tilting skillet, which is similar to a griddle, um, a steam kettle, which is like a large sock pot, a steamer, deep fat fryer, and then your refrigerator. Okay, And as I said, uh, you're going to become familiar with both each of these pieces of um, equipment in the next activity. That's why I didn't go too much in detail on each one. Um, so I hope that you um, enjoyed my little tutorial. Um, your teacher will give you instructions for the next step in this activity. Thank you.